Not too long ago, I actually did a video highlighting the challenges of the CO2 accumulation in the Sea Lion 7 cabin. Since then, I've actually continually worked together very closely with our folks at BYD to troubleshoot the issue and see if we could find a potential fix. So in today's video, I'm going to go through the exact investigations that we've done on BYD side, what they are actually going to do about it, and yeah, what we can actually as owners of Sea Lion 7 do about it. Hi folks, welcome back to the channel. Just in case we haven't met, my name is Charles and on this channel, I try to kind of share with you guys the uh, ins and outs of the Sea Lion 7 and you know, how you can actually maximize the use case of your Sea Lion 7. And sometimes it applies to other BYD models as well because you know, a lot of features actually overlap with each other. Like mentioned earlier, I actually recently did a video about accumulation of CO2 in the cabin of the Sea Lion 7 and I actually compared it with a couple of different cars. Just in case you missed that video, I'll leave the links in the description and also the link right at the top. Long story short, the accumulation on the Sea Lion 7 was pretty bad. Instead, you know what, when you turn on external circulation, instead of bringing down uh, CO2 and bringing in fresh air, from what my readings were, it literally did nothing. There was no difference between internal recycled air and external air. So kudos to the folks at BYD Singapore. I gave them all my testing parameters, the tools that I use, and they also went out to buy and purchase the same tools. And they did their own testing with their Sea Lion 7, uh, not so much my Sea Lion 7, but you know what they had in their fleet. And these are their findings. So after performing the test themselves using you know, the similar equipment, they then agreed and concluded that the Sea Lion 7 did indeed actually accumulate a lot more CO2 than the other models and the reading that they got was similar to what I was also getting. What's worse was that this accumulation never clears. So for example, you know, it's at 2000 uh, parts per million. And if you kind of just sat in the car perpetually, you know, driving long distance to Malaysia or whatever it is, it continues to climb to 3000, 4000, and there's no end in sight, right? So this is in, in itself a massive concern. Now that we have confirmed that there's potentially or actually it's an issue in the Sea Lion 7 with regards to the accumulation of CO2, what is BYD actually going to do about it? So this is what BYD actually told me. They are technically not going to be able to do anything. While they agree that the CO2 level is high and it's not purging the CO2, they do not actually think that this is an issue because from their viewpoint, the car is functioning as per normal. So how do they define normal? So they were telling me that there was no faults in the system. You know, they plug in the computer, there's no faults. They even actually showed me and shared with me a video of the vents actually opening up and letting air through. So my argument to them was very simple because first and foremost, there is no faults, which is fair because there is actually no mechanisms in there that actually tracks anything along the lights of airflow or high CO2. Hence, there's no fault because the fault is only on the vents opening. And from the video I shared earlier, yeah, the vents open fine. So from their perspective, there's nothing wrong with the car. What makes it more challenging is that in order to certify a car safe, CO2 accumulation in cabin is something that is not being tested by many car vendors, unfortunately. In all honesty, I feel that this is a massive disappointment despite all the good things that this car has it going for it from comfort to handling to everything else that I've actually shared on this channel about the goods of the car. But you know what? This is quite a fundamental flaw of the car that I think BYD should at some point address it. Some have dropped me comments and say, hey, you know what? Why, why are you so hard up on uh, this particular feature? It is not because of anything else, but the mere fact that if you put a feature in a car, which is fairly rudimentary, internal circulation versus external circulation, at this juncture from where I'm actually seeing it, those two buttons mean nothing to me because either one that I use is exactly the same. So meaning if I ever go for a long distance travel, there is no way I can actually have um, air coming into the cabin as and when I need it. As of the last video, I also got a lot of comments from the viewers. So I kind of want to you know, clarify certain aspects of it as well. So first and foremost, I know the car actually comes with the auto circulate and ex internal circulation and external circulation mode, where when it's in motion, external circulation happens and when the car stops, internal circulation happens. So just so you know, all the tests that I did in the previous video were with that feature disabled. So I know that auto feature comes in 
and I was well aware of it. So hence, I actually disabled it. And there were some interesting comments that actually mentioned that, hey, you know what? There is a difference between CO and CO2. And uh, carbon monoxide is the one that kills you and CO2 is the one that doesn't kill you. It's only the plants that use CO2. Well, I mean, everybody's got their viewpoint. Uh, I, I never once said in the video that CO2 is going to kill you, but definitely CO2 contributes to drowsiness, etc, etc. I think that's proven. Obviously, some people are a little bit more susceptible to it and some not so. But yeah, anyway, coming back to the topic, I've actually tried very hard to push BYD to do something, but at this juncture, it doesn't seem like they are willing to do anything more. Um, I'm not too sure what I can do next and what buttons I can press. Maybe if you guys have any idea of any escalation points, you can leave me a comment below and maybe we can, you know, work something together. But having said that, as of today, what can we as Sea Lion 7 owners or potential owners actually do? Thankfully, there's actually two workarounds that I've actually figured out. The first workaround is a very simple workaround and if it is one of those methods that flushes out the most air out of the car in the shortest possible time. But it's a little bit uncomfortable, especially when it's a hot weather. All you need to do is turn off the air conditioning and turn it into fan mode. And when you set it to fan mode, you kind of max out the fan mode and your fan just blows hard. So as you can imagine during a hot summer day, fan only without AC, yeah, can get kind of stuffy and warm. But interestingly enough, when you turn it on to fan mode only, it takes 100% external air in. So immediately, I saw the numbers for CO2 drop down like in a matter of minutes. So that's actually one of those workarounds. The second workaround is something that I use a lot more often and it's a little bit more comfortable. This mode is enabled by turning on the windscreen, the mister mode. If you're not sure where this button actually lies, it's actually next to the start-stop button near the gearbox or the gear levers. What happens during the window demister mode is that the air conditioning will then channel all air conditioning into the vents that is nearest to your windscreen. As part of that, the AC actually stays on. But the additional part of the window demister mode is that it actually takes in additional air from external. The whole idea here is to kind of regulate the temperature to demist the windscreen. But the side effect is, it's actually taking in external air. So you actually get a whole breeze of fresh air coming in and you usually take a bit longer, about four to five minutes, but at least the car is not warm. You still get air conditioning running and it cools the car. It's just that it's not directly blowing in your face. If you look at it closely for these two workarounds, you will notice something very interesting. Both these modes actually does one thing extremely well, which is taking in external air. So that simply means the car is possible to do that particular capability well. Just for some reason, maybe it's a software thing that you know the external circulation mode in AC turned on just doesn't do enough. So I reckon it's potentially an airflow issue more than anything else and it could just easily be solved by a software update. But then, hey, you know what? What do I know? I'm not BYD. Anyway, I'm glad there's a workaround at least so we owners have something to kind of fall back on if that is something that we need to do. Uh, and until, you know, BYD decides to fix it. If you're a new owner or an aspiring Sea Lion 7 owner, there are other issues that you want to kind of look out for. And if that interests you, you might want to check out this video right up here. But with that, that's all the time I have for you guys today. And as always, thanks for tuning in and I'll see you guys in the next one.